Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer from Industrial Metallurgists. In this video, I'll talk about phase diagrams. So the topics I'll cover are what are phase diagrams, how they're used, and I have examples about the iron carbon phase diagram and the aluminum copper phase diagram. And then I'll also briefly touch on ternary phase diagrams. So what are phase diagrams? Well, they are graphical representations of the metallurgical phases that are present in an alloy at a particular temperature. So the phase diagram shows temperature versus alloy composition and the different phases that are present at, for, an, for a particular alloy composition at any particular temperature. The diagrams I'll be presenting are called binary phase diagrams. So they are for two elements. So the, the, I'm adding one element to another element. Um, so base, phase diagrams are used to predict the phase changes that occur during heat treating and also the phases that form during metal casting and joining and other processes where, there, where the metal is, is going from molten to, to solid or there's one of the metals, a, a, a liquid metal is in contact with another metal and going from molten to solid. The phase diagram has shows, in addition to showing the temperature and the composition, also shows the different phase fields. The phase fields indicate the phases, phase or phase phase or phases that are present at a particular uh, alloy composition for a particular temperature. So as an example, I'm going to start with a, um, a commonly used phase diagram. This is the iron carbon phase diagram. This would apply to steels. Um, so this shows the uh, uh, iron and carbon being added to the iron and the temperatures on this axis. The phase diagram for iron carbon is only shown for up to 7% carbon. We're, we're not concerned with uh, alloys that contain more than 7% 7 carbon. In fact, we're not even concerned with alloys that contain more than about 2% carbon. Um, so only this portion of the, of, the, of the phase diagram is shown. And there are a number of phases of importance here. There's a single phase uh, regions and two phase regions. So this is a single phase region. This is shows the the compositions, that is the amount of uh, iron and carbon compositions, and temperatures at which the steel would consist of 100% austenite. This is the this small band here is the range of, of compositions, carbon content, and temperatures at which the steel consists of a phase called ferrite. And this is the is the composition. It's a single composition, and the temperatures at which this uh, the, the material would consist of iron carbide Fe3C. So this is a compound, um, and we don't we're not concerned about this for steels, but iron carbides are iron carbides are present in steel. But we would this would this is where we'd have 100% iron carbide um, at six and six sixty uh, six and sixty seven hundred percent carbon. In, in iron, the steel uh, the material would consist of, of iron carbide. Um, and then there are two phase regions. This is a ferrite plus a cementite phase field. This is the austenite plus cementite phase field. And this is the austenite plus ferrite phase field. So we have single phase regions and two phase regions for the binary phase diagram. So the single phase regions are ferrite, austenite, and iron carbide. And then the two phase regions are in between the single phase regions. Um, so ferrite and cementite is in between ferrite and cementite, um, or in between the ferrite and cementite single phase fields. Austenite and cementite, this is a two phase field and it's in, in between or between the single phase austenite field, phase field and the single phase ferrite phase, uh, cement, um, iron carbide phase field. And then this two phase region of, of austenite plus ferrite is between the austenite, the single phase aust uh, austenite phase field and the single phase ferrite phase field. So two phase, the two phase fields are always bounded by single phase fields. Now, the other thing that's of importance are the, the boundaries between the phase fields because it is at the boundaries when we're thinking about heat treating and, and solidifying of, an, of, of a metal. Um, um, as a steel cools, or excuse me, as, a, as an alloy is heated up or cooled past the boundary, then there are changes to the phases that are present in, in the material. So for, for steel, um, we can, if we take a, have a steel, it consists of 1% 1, 1 carbon and heat it up to form, aust heat up to 1,000 degrees to form austenite, then we can cool it. And as the steel cools, once the, the, pat we, the temperature 
uh, intersects this phase field boundary, then cementite starts to form in the steel or in, in the iron carbon alloy. And then with continued cooling, more cementite continues to form. And the cementite is forming from the austenite. The austenite, part of the austenite is transforming to cementite. Finally, at, at, at this temperature, any remaining austenite in the material in, in the in the material starts to transform to ferrite plus cementite. So what we would the the alloy would consist of um, these regions of ferrite and that consist of ferrite and cementite. Um, once the steel, once the material cools, you know it also can have areas that are just particles of cementite. Um, the, the, the diagram doesn't give us uh, information about the the shape or the size of the phases that are present, more information is needed th than, than we can display on the phase diagram. Now for, for steel, um, we're really concerned with the, the phase diagram that's, that's less than 2% weight percent carbon. We don't have steels that, that go even to 2% carbon. And really, we're con most alloys contain less than 1% carbon. So we're really concerned with this narrower portion of the phase diagram, not this entire phase diagram. Though we do have to remember that the iron carbide uh, phase field is out over here. So in this expanded phase diagram, we see that the ferrite phase field is a little bit easier to see here. This is the austenite phase field, austenite plus cementite, ferrite plus cementite, and austenite plus ferrite phase field. And then we see the different phase field boundaries. So by understanding the phase diagram and understanding, uh, we can take a, we can understand and predict what phases will form if we take a, a, a material that consists of iron and carbon and heat it up to form austenite and then cool it. And, and as the steel passes through the different phase fields, uh, as, it, as the steel cools, then different different uh, um, we can predict the phases that form. Now for steels, we um, have additional alloying elements are added in besides carbon also, you know, carbon steels contain manganese and also uh, perhaps a small amount of silicon or aluminum. And those additional alloying elements will it cause changes to the, the, the shape of the phase diagram. But for, for steels and carbon steels and even low alloy steels, we can use these phase diagrams to help us understand the phases that, that form. And then for low alloy steels that contain nickel and molybdenum and chromium, the phase, the this phase diagrams would also be impacted by the addition of those other alloying elements. So we use the binary phase diagram to help us understand the general behavior of steels. And there's, this, is the, this shows the aluminum copper phase diagram. So the temperature is on the y-axis and we see aluminum, 100% aluminum on this end and then increasing amounts of copper until 100% copper on this end. And we see a, a, a many different phase fields present in this alloy. The the um the for for commercial aluminum alloys, were, the alloys are going to contain less than ten percent aluminum or ten percent copper. So we're really only concerned with this portion of the phase diagram. So I'm just going to discuss that. So um, this is a single phase field that consists of aluminum with copper mixed in. So the copper would be mixed in as substitution atoms. The other phase field that's important for, uh, even for alloys that contain less ten, than 10% 10 copper is this phase field. This is the, called the theta phase field. This is a compound, it's an aluminum copper compound. Um, and this is a two phase field This could, where alloys uh, at this, uh, um, Alloys at any of these temperatures within this two-phase field would consist of aluminum plus the theta phase. And then there's the liquid phase field. Um, this is for molten aluminum with copper mixed in, or it can be pure aluminum. And then this is a two-phase field. This consists of um, solid aluminum mixed in with molten aluminum. Um, so as, as you'll notice that the this two-phase field is bounded by two single-phase fields. And this two phase field is also bounded by two single phase fields, the liquid phase field and the aluminum phase field. So by um, understanding the phase diagram and understanding the alloy we have and how it's being cooled or, and heated, we can understand and predict the phases that are present based on the phase diagram. 
And as I mentioned, there can also be ternary phase diagrams. This is when we add, have alloys consist of three elements. And these are much more complicated than the binary phase diagram. I'm not going to explain them here. But it's important to understand that for the binary phase diagrams, adding additional alloying elements than the ones for the binary phase diagram will cause changes to the phase diagrams. But the binary phase diagrams are still, even for, for alloys that contain more than the elements shown in the binary phase diagram, the binary phase diagrams are still helpful for understanding the phases that form in those particular alloys. Um, if you're interested in learning more, um, there's more discussion, a greater discussion about the, the steel phase diagram, an explanation of the steel phase diagram and how it's used for, for um, to understand steel heat treating. Then we have the metallurgy of steel course, and the URL is here. We also have a through hardening course, um, a steel through hardening course, and case hardening course where the phase diagram for uh, uh, the iron carbon phase diagram is used. Um, so that's it. Um, Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you feel free to call or email or just leave, um, leave a, uh, a comment in the YouTube comment section. Thanks for watching and good luck with your medals. Bye.